Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm doing something I'm super excited about. I'm going to be doing some lore videos on Warhammer Fantasy in preparation for Warhammer the Old World. Now I know that there are quite a lot of videos like this on YouTube already, but the idea behind this video is kind of twofold. The first is that I myself know practically nothing really about the lore of Warhammer Fantasy and I want to change that. I thought it'd be really fun if as I learn about the lore, you guys can learn about it with me. So I want to do this in really small chunks of information. I don't want to overwhelm people. Some of the lore videos out there are really quite dense and overwhelming and in fact I am guilty of this myself. When I created my Age of Sigmar lore videos, they were so dense and <laughs> I'm surprised that people even watched them to be honest but they took so many hours to make they were far too detailed they were way too much effort so this is something just a little bit more fun and I think a little bit more engaging so yeah aimed at total beginners bite-sized chunks not too overwhelming that's my kind of thinking there but it's an opportunity for me to learn it's an opportunity for total beginners to learn and yeah it just gets us all prepared for the old world so what I'm going to do is I've bought the 8th edition hardback rulebook the beautiful 500 plus page one I've also got the 7th edition one just to uh you know check what changed between them see if there's any extra details between the two but the idea is I'm just going to pick a double page of the book I'm going to start discussing it I'm not going to do like a kind of audio book drama style thing I'm more going to do an informal discussion talk you through what happened what the key events are we're going to start working our way around the map of the old world so we're going to be looking mostly at Lustria and mention Ulthuan in this video but slowly but surely this map is going to become more familiar to you. I'm also creating a timeline which I'm going to be filling in as we create the lore series. So that's quite exciting as well because it really gives you a perspective of what's going on. And yeah, today's video we're going to be looking at the ancient history of the old world. So the current year that Warhammer Fantasy is set according to the 8th edition rulebook, which I'm just going to call the current timeline. I'm going to ignore the end times for now. The current time is 2522 of the Imperial Calendar. Where the Old World could potentially be set, according to the rumours, is the Age of Three Emperors, which is between 1547 and 2304. So potentially between the current year and the start of the Age of Three Emperors, you're looking at around a thousand years earlier. Again, this is speculation. We don't entirely know when it's going to be set, but today's video is going all the way back around 8,000 years to hear the time of the dragons in the year minus 6000 we'll also be talking about the old ones who they are when they arrived what they did and i think next video we'll be looking at the great cataclysm now this video is very much an experiment for my channel i have no idea how you guys are going to respond to it if you guys are interested show me by liking the video that's the main way to let me know that you want more content like this if there's absolutely no interest, then maybe this series, which I think could end up being absolutely amazing, could end up getting left in the dust. It takes a lot of effort to make the videos. I don't want to be making stuff if no one really cares about it. But yeah, I'm super excited about filling in this timeline as we uh, go through the series, assuming it continues. But here we go. Let's give a whistle stop tour of the ancient history of Warhammer Fantasy. So it all begins in the year minus 6000. The planet at that stage is basically just a frozen icy wasteland. There are creatures living there. In fact, quite a lot of creatures, but they're very monstrous and the only ones that have any actual intelligence are the dragons. So that immediately makes me like the dragons in this storyline even more because in the current age dragons are essentially the oldest thing that have ever lived on the planet. But the dragons they're sort of doing their own thing, they're squabbling amongst each other, they're fighting for territory, they have their own kind of unique ways and cultures. They're busy fighting the other creatures that are around at the time, but it's when the Old Ones turn up that everything begins to change for the planet. The Old Ones are basically a group of alien beings who are essentially gods. 
They're described as a near omnipotent race. What they end up doing is grabbing the planet somehow, I don't know, using their magic. They drag it closer to a sun, so the planet begins to warm up. And then they start molding and populating this planet. Now, the reason the dragons are now so rare is they actually way preferred the colder temperatures from before the old world was uh, changed. But for some reason, these interstellar travellers have come from a really long way away like an incomprehensible distance maybe even in another realm and they're looking at this planet and they're thinking we can tell that in the future this planet is going to be super important they're kind of prophesizing that universe changing events are going to be happening on this world so the first thing they do is they create some portals that allows them to travel between different realms and it allows them to travel from i assume where they came from back to the old world really rapidly and they don't realize at this time that that is going to bring about their downfall eventually but then they start creating some races to populate the old world with and the first ones they create are the slan which we can see a wonderful picture of this toad-like slan down here who is called lord croak lord croak uh, if we just quickly look at this insert on the page is the first ever slan mage priest that they make he's so incredibly ancient that he's ended up dying but because his magical powers are so great his spirit has ended up clinging to his empty body kind of using it as a vessel so in a weird way he's kind of almost transcended death but yeah the old ones create the slan and the slan are there to be their kind of workforce on the planet and they also create the lizard men specifically the saurus so the lizard men comprising of the slan and the saurus are going around they're shaping the world around them they're destroying mountains bringing continents up from the sea the blueprint for the world that we end up with as we know it on this map here basically has come about by the lizard men enacting the will of the old ones if we quickly skip over to this little insert here they build these massive pyramids that create these swirling networks of magic around the planet and with those kind of nodes of energy, they use that to enhance their own magical powers to allow them to shape this planet. So they've created a new race, essentially, but for some reason, they don't stop there. Now, why do they make new races? It's either because they know about the destiny of the world, or they never really intended to have the lizard men as anything more than kind of their workforce. But they embark on a quest to create the perfect being, and their first attempt is to create the elves. The elves are dexterous, they're intelligent, they're graceful, they're highly gifted in magic, but that is also their weakness. They are very susceptible to the corrupting effects of magic, and later on we will find out why that becomes a major character flaw in the elves, and it also leads to an awful lot of arrogance that the other races never end up really liking. So they make the elves, they're a little bit of a failure in a way, they then decide, right, if we've got one race that's far too too susceptible to magic let's go for the polar opposite end of the scale and let's make a race that's super resistant to magic so they end up creating the dwarves one of my absolute favorite races in all of warhammer fantasy the dwarves really are the polar opposite they don't use magic themselves but they are able to use it in their crafting as in imbuing weapons with magical runes and stuff like that but again they fail to make the perfect being because the dwarves are stubborn they're insular whereas the elves are given the island of ulthuan let me show you where that is that's over here they build these incredibly magnificent stunning cities and ports by the coastlands the dwarves are totally the opposite they prefer their own company and they basically prefer to dig down into the mountains and create their holds there so the next race that appears are the orcs and the goblins now they were never meant to come to the old world it even says here that they believe they traveled to the old world as spores attached to their kind of star traveling vessels so the old ones travel through space and they unwittingly bring these spores with them those spores end up somehow planting into the earth and that's where the orcs and the goblins come from and those are obviously an incredibly violent and destructive race so immediately probably causing issues for the dwarves and the elves so next was when they created the race of man 
and men were designed to be kind of in the middle of the dwarves and the elves. They weren't as skilled in any one thing, but they were more adaptable, more able to respond to changing environments and thrive anywhere, and they could master loads of new skills, maybe not quite as well as either the dwarves or the elves. They certainly could learn magic and craft things and build things, so they were kind of the uh, jack-of-all-trades race. But finally, they created their last two races which were the halflings and the ogres and it describes them as a really vulgar race who are just obsessed with basically eating but the reason that the halflings and the ogres are described as being so gross is possibly the fact that the old ones never got around to finishing those races whilst they were still kind of creating and perfecting them disaster strikes and it brings about the end of everything they had planned and it ends the paradise as we know it at this age. Again at this stage it's worth pointing out that even the humans are a very primitive race by this point. They're still living in caves and wearing furs kind of like how we would picture mankind to be 10,000 years ago. So how do things start going wrong? We're going to look at that more in the next video but essentially it begins with these magical portals that the old ones are traveling through. They build one at each pole of the planet basically to allow them to travel so far those portals go to a place called the realm of chaos. It's like another dimension and they're using the realm of chaos as a means to transport themselves rapidly across great distances. What what they don't realise is that there is a malign and sinister presence in that other realm and they're not too happy with the old ones traversing through their realm. So yeah, if we carry this series on, which I really hope we do, then next time we are going to be looking at the event called the Great Cataclysm, which is where disaster strikes. And then from then onwards, we can start looking at how the races respond to this, where they go from there. And there's some really great pieces of lore, for example, why the dwarves and the elves absolutely hate each other. And yeah, we can build our way all the way up to the current year and see what is going on there. So let me know if you liked the video. Don't forget to like it. If you have anything to add to this storyline, by all means, to add it in the comments down below because there will be people out there who know far more than I do. But yeah, I'm super excited about this series. I think it has the potential to be really great fun. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to join my new Warhammer Facebook group, the Warhammer Kitetsu Clan. The link for that will be in the description. No pressure whatsoever, but consider becoming a patron because that really helps me out and it means I will have more opportunities to do giveaways on my channel. But yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys really soon.